Stephen Jordan head to the Klamath Mountains of Northern California this week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Backpacker Get Out More TV. I am your host, Randy Propster. Excited to have you back this week as we head to Northern California and the Klamath Mountains. Before we get out there and join Steve and Jordan on their smoky adventure, we'll talk more about that smoky nature. Certainly some folks impacted by the fires. We want to do what we can to help them, encourage you to help support some great organizations that are going to do some great things to help not only the trails and the forests, but the people who have been impacted, losing homes, losing lives. It's a serious ordeal and we want to do what we can to help support those in need. So we're going to direct you to some places where you could donate and help all of those impacted by the fires. Before we get too far though, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, turn on the bell for notifications. We'd love to be able to inform you when we go live with every single episode of Backpacker Get Out More TV. Also find the link in the description below or popping up now if you're watching this on YouTube that will allow you to enter this week's gear giveaway. Some great brand partners have provided a ton, I mean a ton of really good gear. We're giving away prize packs each and every week. Comment below and tell us what gear you would love to win from some great brands like Darn Tough, Jet Boil, Lakey, Mystery Ranch, Oboe's Footwear, Sawyer Products, Sea to Summit, Yellowstone Select Kentucky Bourbon, and Visit NC Smokies. Now, speaking of NC Smokies, nestled in the Great Smoky Mountains of Western North Carolina, Haywood County has an absolutely fantastic playground. If you are an outdoorsman or a woman who loves to experience all things wild, and we are so excited to have some friends of Steve and Jordan from right there in Haywood County give us a little more insight as to some of the beauty in both the things you can see and things you can do out there in Haywood County, North Carolina. So before we get to the Klamath Mountains of Northern California, let's start this week's episode as we do every week right there in Steve and Jordan's hometown, Haywood County, North Carolina. I'm Betsy Boyd and this is my husband Danny Boyd and we have restored log cabins and grown Christmas trees at Boyd Mountain Log Cabins and Christmas Trees in Haywood County, North Carolina. If you're looking for a different kind of experience with all the amenities that you're accustomed to, yet places to have social distancing and have your own setting, this is the place. We have nine cabins and they all are fully furnished with kitchens, fireplaces, central heat and air conditioning, porches, fire pits, and it's a setting that everybody enjoys because they have privacy. Yeah, and we're right here in Haywood County, which is a great place, great destination for hiking, fishing, just exploring the outdoors. If you're looking for an interesting, unique vacation spot, think about Boyd Mountain Log Cabins. We can accommodate up to 12 people in some of the cabins. And we're easy to get to and hard to forget in Haywood County, North Carolina. So this week when Steve and Jordan got out to the Klamaths in Northern California, the smoke was already in the air. But you know what? It has gotten worse and continued to get worse since the time we were there. And so we want to make sure that we're doing what we can to help and we want you to join us. So there's going to be a number of links that we'll share with you this week in the description and in the video. We'll have some pop up, things like the American Red Cross that have a fund set up right now where we could donate and do all we can to help those that have been impacted by wildfires. Obviously the trails, the camps, those things are, are impacted and we're really sad about that, but we know that people's lives, their homes have been impacted in a very serious way. And so we wanna encourage you to join in and doing everything that we can to provide the resources that all these great organizations need to help recover from the wildfires that are really ravaging most of the West Coast right now. 
So that said, we do want to make sure that you learn a little bit more about the destination that we're going to visit. And we had a chance to stop in to Redding Sports LTD in Redding, California, an area that definitely knows a thing or two about the Klamath Mountains, about all of the beauty that is surrounding them in Northern California, how to deal with the fact that you're going to be impacted by fires at time. They've had their fair share, that's for sure. So we wanted to get their expertise, learn a little bit more about where we were going and had a chance to talk to longtime associate I believe Chris has been there since he was about 16 years old. Chris Brewer, he does a great job of bringing us up to speed on the Klamath Mountain area that we're going to be visiting, as well as giving us a dodging pitfall. So we wanted to make sure that you knew all about the zipper compartment on the Mystery Ranch packs and how it is designed in a way that will allow easier access and much better storage for your sleeping bag in your pack. So here we are with this week's Dodging Pitfalls segment as we learn more about Redding California's Redding Sports LTD and Northern California's Abundant Outdoor Opportunities with Chris Brewer. All right, welcome to Redding Sports LTD. We've been located here in Redding, California for over 20 years. We carry a wide selection of backpacking, cycling, running shoes, hiking shoes, wakeboards, water skis, snowboarding and snow skis. Uh, any outdoor adventure needs, we have it. If you do come visit Redding, we have a lot of great outdoor activities. We have Shasta Lake and Shasta Mountain to your north, uh, Lassen National Park to the east, along with the Thousand Lake Wilderness. To your west, you have Whiskey Town Recreational Area and the Trinity Alps. The thing that makes this store the most unique is the staff. A lot of the staff has been here for over 10 years. Um, we have a lot of experience. We all do the activities that we sell. Uh, we like to go out in groups, uh, so we actually mingle within each other. All right, so if you guys do decide to head out to the Trinities, a great pack for that would be the Mystery Ranch here. Uh, this is the Stein 65, uh, super durable material. You have urethane zippers. Um, the speed zip sleeping bag compartment and the top lid can also change over into a day pack. Um, carries the rate, weight really well, um, super comfortable, a uh, great weekend to week long backpack. The other unique thing about the speed zip system is it is a horizontal zip, making it extremely easy to get that sleeping bag in and out when needed. In this sleeping bag compartment, you have a compression sack or strap right here as well. So this is gonna help hold everything down and together. Uh, the reason why you wanna put your sleeping bag towards the bottom of the pack is because it's lighter. You wanna get all that weight up here, right next to you, it's gonna carry more comfortably. It's not gonna feel like you have a lot of weight right there on your hips uh, or make you feel like you're pulling backwards when you're going. Close it up, just zip it up, cinch it tight so that zipper doesn't come off during a heavy load and you're good to go. If you want to put your sleeping pad over here, you can do that with these straps. Any gear loops, ice axe, trekking poles, you got those right there located. If you want to check us out more, visit us at www.readingsportsltd.com. You can check us out also on Instagram. Mystery Ranch is on a mission to make the world's best backpacks for a wide variety of outdoor enthusiasts. Built to be extremely configurable with a concentration on organization and accessibility. Plus, these bags are bomb-proof. They are purpose-built to assure not only usability, but durability. To learn more about Mystery Ranch backpacks, visit mysteryranch.com or check out the links in the description below. In addition to great personalities, guys like Chris from stores like Redding Sports LTD and our own fantastic duo of Jordan and Steve, I must say that a couple of the stars of this year's series, Backpacker Get Out More TV, have been Sage and Kane. I think we have more comments from you at home about those two beautiful dogs than anything else this season. And so we wanted to make sure to bring you up to speed on outfitting your dogs and also some great practices to ensure that your dogs not only are safe, 
but fellow hikers and those that you come upon out there on trail are feeling safe with this week's skills every backpacker should know, backpacking with dogs. So when you do take your dog in the backcountry, you want to make sure to bring water and food for them too. They go through just as much energy, if not more, than you do. So a pack is great. Uh, rough wear packs, you just want to measure their deepest chest section right here and get that measurement. So Kane here is measuring out at 30 inches. Palisade pack from Roughwear. You have a big main compartment here. This pack also comes with a hydration system in each one of the, the pockets. It's pretty wild. You have another smaller compartment here as well. And then you have the compression straps to cinch it all down so it doesn't move around on the dog too much. You also have the option to take the whole pack system off of this if you are just going to do a day hike and the dog's not going to come with you. I mean, the, you don't need the gear. Wow. You can just have a harness. So it'd just be much more comfortable for the dog. You need to get them over stuff. Has that handle, you can, you can assist with that. Our dogs come everywhere with us. We love them, they're like family. They also keep us warm on trail, they keep us safe, and they're super entertaining. So we like having them. If you've got dogs, I'm sure you love taking your dogs out on trail too. There are some tips and tricks that you should know before you hit the trail with your dog. So I'm gonna show you guys how to have a good time out on the trail with your pups. First thing you're gonna wanna do is do your research. You gotta make sure that the dogs are allowed on the trail to begin with. Most national parks, for example, are not dog friendly. A lot of trails have leash laws or they have to be under audible voice control at all times, things like that. So just make sure you're looking into that. Another thing as part of the research is how much water access are you gonna have on the trail? Uh, we actually have water bottles that the dogs bring if we're going on a trail that does not have a lot of creek crossings. So that's something to be aware of also because you don't want them going thirsty. Last tip that I'd give you is sometimes on trail you might run into obstacles where you may have to take the dogs off leash from a safety standpoint. So it's really important that your dogs are well trained enough to know some basic commands. And I'm gonna let Steve show you guys how well trained these two are. All right, Kane, you want to show them some tricks? Let me sit right now, good boy. So first of all, I really like these Kurgo leashes. Uh, it's got an attachment point there. It's also got one here. Uh, a lot of times I'll just hook it up to whatever pack I'm wearing. Uh, but sometimes when we're healing, come here Kane. I don't want so much slack. Come on, come on, feel. Sit, sit. Good boy. So what I'll do is you can add a little bit more, and it's got a bunch of loops to the whole leash, so I can kind of control how close he is to me. Right, Kane? Want to show him some more moves? Good boy. So like we were saying, uh, sometimes you have to get over an obstacle, whether it's a big rock, a tree, and it's just not safe. They might get caught on their leash or they might pull you or you might pull them. Uh, so what we do is we'll wrap them around here. All right, buddy? We'll just clip this here. Give me a sit right now. Cane, stay. So we taught him to stay so I can get over said obstacle. <laughs> I'll pretend. And then uh, Kane's got a lot of control too. Like, you'll wait for me, right? All right, another reason that we teach him to heal in the back so we can still use our trekking poles and they don't get in the way. Right, Sage? But a good trick is if other people are coming on the trail, we don't want to get in the way. Sometimes trails fall off very steeply to the side. So something we've taught the dogs is up. Right, Sage? So get up. Get up. Good girl. See it? Good girl. So this enables us to kind of step off the trail, have the dog on the upper side of the trail. That way people can go by. Good girl. As you can see, Sage and Kane are just fantastic dogs, awesome trail dogs, and a lot of people have questioned, how do we go about ensuring that the dogs stay safe from things like ticks? Certainly an insect that they're going to be exposed to out there on trail. So this week, our Closer Look segment, Jordan takes a look at Sawyer permethrin and how you can treat it on your dogs to keep them insect-free while you're out there backpacking. 
In case you've missed some of our previous episodes, Sawyer permethrin has quickly become a super essential piece of gear for us. We keep it in the bed of the truck all the time. We've been able to help other friends out, spray their gear. Um, basically, it is a insect repellent and it actually doesn't just repel, it kills mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, biting flies, things like that that carry really dangerous diseases. A uh, really little known fact about this stuff is it is actually safe for your dogs as well. So there's a lot of different flea and mosquito tick options out there for your pets. This one's really awesome because it kills them and it's safe for up to six weeks. It'll stay on your dog. Um, it's really easy, it comes in this spray bottle. You just start uh, at the tail, you start spraying and just spray up their body. Make sure you're rubbing it in so it gets evenly coated, gets nice and all the way down to their skin on it. And basically just make sure that they're not licking themselves until it's dry and then it's perfectly safe for them. So really awesome option for dog repellent as well as treating your gear and your clothes um, to really just keep your whole entire space and your loved ones safe from those diseases that those bugs can carry. If you've got concerns or questions, you can visit Sawyer's website for more information or you can even talk to your veterinarian about using this on your dogs. From staying hydrated to staying bug free, Sawyer products have been a staple in my pack for years now. Today we're taking a look at Sawyer water filtration systems. Whether you choose to squeeze or let gravity do the work, staying hydrated is a key part of backpacking. And with their uh, lightweight design and ease of use, they've become my favorite pick for the backcountry. To learn more about these or any of Sawyer's products, head on over to Sawyer.com or visit the link in the description below. Now it's time to get Kane and Sage and Stephen Jordan out there on trail in the Klamath Mountains, you're gonna notice that it is definitely a smoky environment, but it got much, much worse since we were there to record this filming. So please do your part. We all wanna help support those that are impacted by wildfires. There are links in the description below where we can support those organizations that are doing everything they can to help those families that have been impacted so heavily. So. Let's get out, let's enjoy the beauty of Northern California, and let's hope that it can recover as quickly as possible from the wildfires that impacted areas, even areas like we visited in the Klamath Mountains, where we joined Steve and Jordan on trail now. Is it recording now? Puppies ready to hike? You ready to hike, Sage? Go for a hike? This is not their first time hiking in North California, but it is Jordan's. It is. She doesn't know what she's about to get into. No, I'm excited. We've got about a nine mile hike in and then a nine mile hike out tomorrow. We're just doing an out and back. Uh, we got about a 5,000 foot elevation change, so uh, it's going to be a pretty hilly hike. Um, but we've given ourselves all day and I think really excited about seeing what this area has to offer. Are you ready? Uphill. Forever. My lungs are screaming at me. Screaming lungs. She's not even a smoker. I'm not. I've never smoked a day in my life. Y'all check this out. Big, big trees. Wow. Put your arms around it. I'm like almost six Wow. Hey. Over a few ridges into a canyon back up onto another ridge and now we're coming up this sweet little canyon it's got a waterfall right by the side of the trail yeah. pretty sweet yeah, right I'm tired, tired? Mm -hmm. look at the lime green moss on all of these trees Look at these fields of flowers, this is awesome. Yeah, it's 200 feet. Can get stuck 
broken and if it were to yank my arm back, that could be pretty catastrophic on something this deep. All right, so we got this kind of loose, gravelly scramble up to the top, but it looks like there's like a, I don't know, at least a hundred foot waterfall coming off of this lake we're headed to. And during the climb, I've been treated to wildflowers and views. Oh. What you think? Not sure if you can see it, but we kind of climbed above the smoke. Pretty wild. You can see it kind of billowing over the ridge out there. Hey, we got something sweet up here, huh? Yeah. Let's go. I think so. Be asking Dennis for more trail advice in the future. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. We appreciate it. Time to make camp. Look what we found. Check it out. All right, so a nine mile hike has our stomachs growling. Uh, so we are whipping up a stir fry tonight, a, a rather big one. Um, it's a great hearty trail meal, especially if you know the weather's gonna be cold, it kind of warms you up inside. So to start things off, the ingredients for this one are going to be broccoli. We've got some stir fry sauce, some rice that we pre-cooked at the truck last night. Uh, we brought a frozen chicken breast in, knowing it'd be probably to foot all by the time we got to camp. Um, and of course, we've always got our little spice and, and oil set. So to start this one off, I'm gonna put a little oil on my jet boil pan, get the mini-mo cranking. That simmer valve, that's our, our favorite one so far. It's just so nice to be able to really dial in your cooking and simmer things to finish them off if you need to or, or really get it ripping when you need to boil some water. I, I like to add a little seasoning to for flavor, Jordan lets me throw a little spice on there. But, you know, cook that chicken, move it around. I'll put a little bit of stir fry sauce in there sometimes just to give it a little flavor um, as it's cooking. So as my chicken starts to cook, I like to throw a little bit of the sauce in there just to get the flavor going right off the bat. Doesn't hurt. Um, but then, you know, keep mixing that chicken around and once it's starting to look like it's almost cooked, that's when I wanna throw my, my broccoli in, you know, so we're not gonna overcook the chicken trying to do the broccoli, right? Um, so get that broccoli going. I add a little bit more of the sauce because that, that moisture in the sauce is gonna help cook that broccoli as well without you know, kind of overdoing things. All right, so once that broccoli's looking cooked and we know that our, our chicken's safe, we'll, we'll take that off and we'll put our rice, our stir fry mix, and a little bit of water uh, in the jet boil pot and kind of mix that all around and get it going. Uh, once that's heated up, we're gonna combine all of our ingredients and, and get down. A little piece. Gotta wait, gotta wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite aspects of Backpacker Get Out More TV is introducing all of you to some of my favorite stores around the country. Gateways to Adventure. These shops are seriously the place that you need to go to talk to the experts before you get out there on trail. It will put your exploration, your preparation on the right path right out of the gates, I promise you. So I'm really excited to share with you now Phil and his shop, Sunrise Mountain Sports in Livermore, California. Another of those just top-notch shops that has folks working there that know their stuff. So in addition to talking to Phil and learning more about the shop, we're also excited to talk to Heather, another longtime associate who's gonna bring us up to speed on just the specs of the Oboe's Tamarack Shoe. Sunrise Mountain Sports, the best thing I can say about us is that we are about human powered activity. We hike, we run, we walk, we backpack, we camp, all those things. And we have a great offering in footwear. We also sell gear and apparel to go with that and accessories. 
We're family owned, we've been family owned, been in Livermore since 1975. We do uh, weekly hikes and weekly runs and other things from the shop. We sponsor sections of our local creek to clean up. We have a lot of community events. Not all of them are happening right now because of the, the COVID shutdowns, but we do a lot of stuff in the community. Um, and I think now in our new location here, right downtown, we capture the community a lot um, with those events and with the stuff we sell. So we carry a lot of oboe shoes or footwear here at Sunrise Mountain Sports and to cover some of just the specs of this Tamarack shoe. So Oboes weighs this a size 9 at 16.9 ounces. It has waterproofing with their B-Dry. It uses new buck leather. It has a rubber toe cap and a rubber heel cap. It uses the granite peak midsole that runs up the side of the shoe. If, you're, if you want to find out more information about our store, um, we're right in the center of downtown Livermore. Come visit us anytime. Um, or find us online at sunrisemountainsports.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram under Sunrise Mountain Sports and we're here to help you. Obos Footwear. We plant a tree for every pair sold. One million and counting. <laughs> That's a lot of f***ing trees. Paying attention to the specs in your footwear, well, all of your gear actually, is really important. It'll help you choose the perfect piece of equipment for your next adventure. When it comes to your footwear though, just the shoes, only half the battle. You've got to partner your socks and your shoes together for ultimate feet comfort. That's why we want to check back in with Phil now at Sunrise Mountain Sports, where he's going to bring us up to speed on a forgotten feature, the variety of heights in your darn tough socks. At Sunrise Mountain Sports, we've carried Darn Tough for years. They're really well known for being super durable and backed by a great guarantee from the company. We carry a whole bunch of different models, but a hidden feature you might not know about is they make a sock for every occasion, from heavy duty, high up the calf, to light duty, to casual. You can't take full advantage of hiking if you don't take good care of your feet, and that's why we love Darn Tough socks so much. They offer a variety of colors and designs for men and women. They're super comfortable because they're made from merino wool blend that's also antimicrobial so they don't get funky. And best of all, the socks are so durable that Darn Tough offers a lifetime warranty. To learn more about Darn Tough socks, go to darntough.com or click the link in the description below. A lot of people think about backpacking and they think about long days on trail, carrying that pack the whole way. I'll be honest with you, one of my favorite elements of backpacking is waking up in the mountains on those beautiful mornings, enjoying a cup of coffee, taking a dip in the lake, and just being surrounded by all that beauty. And I was so happy to see Steve and Jordan do just that as we get back out and join them in the Klamath Mountains of Northern California. Good morning. Good morning. Kane is in heaven right now, aren't you, Bubba? Oh, hi. Snuggle, puppy. It's looking beautiful out there. Just did a, a, a breakfast skillet on a tortilla. With hot sauce. With hot sauce. What's your uh, star I'm rating? I'm baking bits. Mm. Spice it up a little bit. It's good. Out of five stars, what'd you give it? This is four. Ooh, four stars. Yeah. What's this view? Five. <laughs> One of my favorite things about the jet boil is this um, simmer valve right here right so we cooked rice for dinner last night rice is one of those things it seems like it should be really easy to cook but for some reason is very difficult and you, it's very easy to burn especially in the backcountry because a lot of times you're either at very little flame or all in so there's not really a lot of ways to control the temperature but with this simmer valve you really can totally change the height and the intensity of the flame which makes it a lot easier to cook a really wide range of foods I think that's one of my favorite things about the jet boil
Check it out. We are sitting still for once. Decided we would have a beach day. So yeah, we're gonna wait till we get too hot and jump off that rock. So this trip, I knew we were going to be getting a little bit higher up in elevation. Um, the night before when we slept, it was kind of chilly. So I chose to go with the, uh, the Ascent series for this bag. It's got a comfort limit of 26, the lower limit of 15, um, and an extreme of negative 19. It's a um, 750 fill. It's been really, really warm. It's got a lot of, you just feel like you're sleeping inside of a cloud. Um, they've got a bunch of different layers of sleeping bags at Sea to Summit, but this one's kind of like more their, their Cadillac to me. Um, it's got dual zippers on the sides. I can stick my arms out. Uh, I can unzip the bottom, let my feet breathe a little bit. Something else I'm really impressed by, uh, the baffles on this thing are pretty stellar. Uh, when the sleeping bag comes together, it kind of seals you in there with a back baffle and a front baffle around your neck, so you keep all that warm air in there. Uh, it's also got some pretty neat like inner pockets. Uh, there's a cell phone pocket. I know that when I'm sleeping in really cold places, I like to put my camera batteries uh, and my cell phone in with my body. That way everything stays warm uh, and doesn't die on me overnight. Something else I've been really impressed by uh, Cedar Summit is, especially with these higher end bags, is they're, they're putting more fill and more protection in all the right places. So the, the foot box on this one is a little bit stronger. Uh, and there's a lot more fill down there because our feet get cold sometimes. I know with the, the women's, they've even put a little bit more fill in certain areas, like uh, around their hips, um, with a little bit more room where their legs are. Um, plus, it's a pretty darn good looking sleeping bag, if I don't say so myself. Some of them out there are kind of drab, you know, in the industry, so this thing's, this thing's uh, I like some color out here. Some of the most beautiful mountain terrain can oftentimes be the most difficult to hike in. When you're dealing with rocks and ruts and roots, adding some confidence, adding some comfort, adding some safety by adding a set of trekking poles is something I highly recommend. So Jordan's about to give us an instant upgrade with a feature you'll find in the Lakey Trekking Pole, the Dynamic Suspension System. One thing that Lucky Poles offer that is an instant upgrade is their dynamic suspension system. You can see this little gray piece right here. It is a suspension system essentially and it actually takes away up to 40% of the shock that you would feel when you're hiking downhill. Uh, it squishes and kind of just absorbs that into the whole pole, which is super helpful. I have really bad knees um, from competitive sports growing up and these Lucky Poles have completely changed my hiking experience. They've taken a lot of the pain away for me. We've been traveling all over the country at this point. We've visited a ton of retail stores. A lot of the retail stores only carry, you can see next to me here, all of these poles have the dynamic suspension system. So it really does make a huge impact on your hiking to be able to absorb that shock when you're uh, going downhill. Also, just a pro tip here, these little plastic pieces are travel protectors. So you wanna make sure that you take those off when you're hiking. These poles I'm showing you right now are the Legacy Light Cortec. They're three piece poles uh, using the Speedlock 2 mechanism here. Super easy to adjust to the height that you need on both sides there. Uh, all three pieces are made out of aluminum, so they're really lightweight as well. Lucky trekking poles are a great addition to your pack to help with extra stability and help take the pressure off your knees and ankles. Lucky trekking poles come in a variety of lightweight materials and styles. The innovative handles are super comfortable and they offer a unique adjustable strap system. Plus, they break down really easily to store in your pack when you're not using them. 
To learn more about the products from Lecky, head on over to lecky.com or click the link in the description below. The adventure continues. Steve and Jordan hike out a little after dark, but then find a great spot to throw the tent top up on the truck and enjoy some more of the beauty of the Klamath Mountains of Northern California. Let's get back out on trail and continue the adventure now. Time to leave this lovely paradise. Uh, it's gonna be a, a fun couple miles <laughs> back. I got a pretty wild scree field to go down. Yep. Um, it's also about five o'clock right now, so we're definitely gonna be night hiking some, but we just couldn't leave today, so we decided to kick it a little longer. And why would you wanna hike in the heat of day when you can That's do it in the evening? True. See? Very true. So we'll see. Let's go. And down. Act like you beat it. Boxing gloves. All right, because Jordan says I'm not on camera enough, which is probably true, but you know. This is super cool though. Y'all have to check out this forest. Quick snack break. All right, y'all, uh, we learned our lesson on the way up. It was super hot, so we decided to kind of dip out of here once the sun started setting behind the ridge. Uh, most of the hike out, we haven't needed our headlamps, which has been great, but uh, this last bit, I think we're gonna have to turn them on. So I'm wearing mine around my neck, and once we get in this thick forest, it's probably going ahead. It's getting dark, in case you can't see. Hiking in the dark. Made it. Let's see. It is about 10.30. We made pretty good time on that, actually. Pups in the car and go find us a camp spot for the night. After a fantastic hike in, yes, the smoke-filled Klamath Mountains, please remember there are people being impacted as we speak by some really, really horrible forest fires. And we would love to be a part of helping them recover. So please, if you would like to help, find the description below. There are links to great organizations that could use our support right now, help rebuild not only the trails, the camps, but the homes and the lives of those that have been so heavily impacted by these fires. We appreciate you joining us this week. We wanna celebrate the great hike that we did have, celebrate the fact that hopefully folks will be able to get back on their feet very quickly after these fires. And to do that, we're going to bring you this week's Trail Mixology, where Steve goes old school with a recipe he likes to call a Skeeter Beater that includes some tasty Yellowstone Select Kentucky Bourbon. All right, y'all. Had to stop inside to tell you about this one. This is a homemade recipe. I invented it in the, the north jungle of Wisconsin myself. And I call this one the Skeeter Defeater. While ensuring that you not only have maximum flavor, this is gonna ensure that you also have maximum chest hair growth. We're drinking this one straight. It's a four and seven year blend. It's dreamy, 93 proof. All right, so let's get started on this recipe. Pour yourself some bourbon, shed it aside real quick. 
spray yourself with a little keratin. Light your cigar. Now you've got a combo that will ensure maximum peace, no skeeters, and all kinds of good flavor. Yellowstone Bourbon is handcrafted in the state of Kentucky. These small batch whiskeys are the work of seventh generation craftsmen, resulting in a unique taste, perfect for the trail. Plus, a portion of every bottle sold goes to helping preserve our national parks. Cheers to that. To learn more about the products from Yellowstone Bourbon, head on over to limestonebranch.com or click the link in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. Please do what you can to support those impacted by the wildfires. We've left you some links in the description below to some great organizations that are helping all of those that are being impacted by the horrible fires. Also, make sure that you click like, turn on the subscribe button, make sure that you leave a comment and tell us what you would like to see on an upcoming episode of Backpacker Get Out More TV. Between now and next Thursday night, when we move down to Southern California for another backpacking adventure, I hope you can get outside yourself, enjoy some fresh air, please be kind to one another, and enjoy the tunes from the Darren Nicholson Band, great Smoky Mountain music from right there in Stephen Jordan's hometown of Haywood County, and we'll see you next time on Backpacker Get Out More TV.